Hi. Let's take a look at some pumps, see what's available uh, on the market. We'll start with uh, what might be used by homeowners, then we'll look at what's uh, available for industry, which are typically larger pumps. Let's start with a jet pump. This is a, what's called a jet pump, generically anyways, and um, it's a very common type of pump you might have in your home if you're outside of city limits or something like that. And what it is, it's a pump that can lift water from a well, not too deep, but maybe 10 or 15 feet. And the way it works is it's got an, inside, it's got a venturi, and we, we discussed venturi, so we know uh, what they do. So water is pumped back into the venturi, which creates low pressure, which helps to pull up the water from the, uh, from the well. So um, these pumps are very well known, they're available many, many places, uh, uh, do a perfect job, all kinds of sizes and pressures are available. This uh, next pump is a pedestal pump. You've probably seen those or know what they are. Uh, these would be used in your basement. If you have, if, uh, if your house or, or place is on wet land or, or ground that has a high water table, you may get water infiltration. So these pumps will be placed in a little depressed area of your basement, making sure that the basement itself doesn't fill up with water. So there's a float that will turn the pump on and off as required. You see the, pot, the pump part is at the bottom of the stand and the pipe would be connected there and the motor is up at the top nice and dry. Borehole pumps are also frequently used by uh, homeowners and uh, this is where you have a very deep artesian well where it's necessary to, to drill a hole down and your contractor will then install a metal sleeve which is called a casing and you would put your pump inside that casing. So these pumps just go from three inches in diameter to six to eight for, for higher flow rates. Typical homeowner will have a three inch diameter um, turbine pumps, submersible or called turbine pumps. So here's what they look like. They're sort of a one piece unit. You have the motor at the bottom and uh, the pump is at the top. The suction is in the middle. Motor drives the turbine uh, or the impellers. Impellers are in series to provide more and more pressure to get the water up to your home. So these pumps uh, can be can go down as far as 200, 300, 400 feet. It's a question of how many impeller stages you put uh, to get the desired pressure. And of course, they come in different flow rates and sizes. So um, the, uh, the final one I want to talk about that could be used by homeowners is a submersible pump. This type of pump is, uh, would be used to uh, empty, uh, empty uh, a drain, empty a pond, or something like that. So they're fully submersible and they come in all kinds of sizes by many different types of manufacturers and are uh, readily available. Right, so let's talk about industrial type pumps. Uh, the Hydraulic Institute came up with a nomenclature type system or a system of uh, of uh, simple uh, identifiers for pumps that they call OH1, OH2, OH3. And that's an easy way to refer to a style of pump, let's say. So OH means overhung. Overhung meaning that the impeller is at, uh, hangs off the end of a shaft. So OH1 is one to style all the way up to OH789, uh, whatever. So the first industrial type of pump I want to talk about is the magnetic drive pump. The magnetic drive pump is a typically a rather small pump uh, used in uh, petrochem and all kinds of industries actually for transferring of chemicals that might be uh, dangerous, uh, corrosive, uh, uh, that type. So the uh, characteristic is that the drive is isolated from the pump and by means of a magnetic um, driving arrangement. So it's driven through magnets therefore there is no seal that could leak, uh, being making it you know, more or less intrinsically safe. So uh, if you want to go even safer than a mag flow, a mag drive pump, you would go to a can pump. And in this case, a can pump, everything is in, enclosed. So the motor itself is inside a casing and it drives the pump internally so that you have absolutely no risk whatsoever now of, um, of having a leakage. So from a sealless point of view, this would be the ultimate and probably you would use this on extremely dangerous uh, 
liquids, maybe even very radioactive liquids or things of that nature. Uh, a very popular or uh, compact type of pump that we all, you often see in industry is an inline pump. They make them uh, smaller and bigger. Uh, so sometimes they're small, small enough that the pump is basically attached to uh, the motor and other, otherwise the pump, if they're bigger the pump will be, uh, the motor will be separate and there'll be a coupling between the motor and the pump. Some of these are so small that they're, um, they're just supported by the pipe and others are a little bit bigger they need to support on the ground and the pipes are connected to them. And they'd be used again in a variety of industries. Uh, you, you, you see them in uh, places where you need to move a refrigerant around, they're used for water transfer, they're, they're a uh, very general type of pump that can be used in many situations. The vertical multi-stage pump is one that's come up in the last uh, few years, maybe 10 years or so. It's a very popular type of pump. It's usually used in a boosting uh, type of uh, application for water, boosting water pressure. It's compact. It sits uh, on the ground. It's uh, got a vertical arrangement where all the impellers are stacked vertically and uh, so you can get a lot of pressure. The flow range is a little bit limited, but you can go to fairly low flows to medium, uh, medium flows. Used in a variety of situations. I've seen it used uh, for, uh, let's say, in a um, fire, um, fire main system where you need to maintain the pressure. If you have a huge system that's distributed all over the place, you'll always have leaks where you lose the pressure. So these little guys can be installed somewhere in the system and start automatically to boost up the pressure and in any application where you need to raise the pressure for a given service. This is a vertical cantilever pump. It's used in industry uh, for sumps, so these are pits that are, you know, certain size and four foot by four foot. The pump is in the bottom, it's pumping out whatever mix uh, is coming from the trenches of this plant to a uh, holding tank somewhere for, for treatment. So it's a very robust pump. The, uh, the pump itself is submerged and the motor is uh, at the top, uh, dry and uh, easily changed and what have you. The, uh, this next pump is the uh, typical centrifugal volute type pump. This is the workhorse of the industry. This pump you see everywhere in just about every industry imaginable. They, it comes in different sizes of course, very large range of flow and pressure. Uh, comes in different materials, so if you have corrosive materials, aggressive materials, even very aggressive slurries, uh, use a similar type of pump like this, except they'll have a liner inside. Uh, the materials of the pump and impeller can be in, in uh, Teflon and all kinds of uh, polyethylene uh, types of materials so for aggressive uh, liquids. So this is really the, uh, the, uh, the workhorse of, of the industry. And this next one here, its big brother, is called a double suction pump. Why double suction? Because the liquid enters uh, the suction and then within the pump it goes around the impeller, enters into the eye of the impeller from both sides, and then is ejected from the impeller periphery out through the discharge. It's also called an in-between bearings pump. This pump is extremely stable made in a very wide range of flows and, and pressure, flows up to 30, 40,000 gallons a minute. It's absolutely the Cadillac of pumps where you can typically use for water but can also be used for uh, other, other uh, low viscosity type fluids and uh, just a very, very robust and, uh, uh, how do you say, robust and, and, and high quality low vibration, low maintenance kind of pump. This last one is the vertical turbine pump. This pump is usually fairly large. It'll be the water intake for a plant, for example, so it'll be uh, connected to the, uh, to the river, and uh, the water will be brought in from a channel, and this will sit on top, dry, within a pump house, and its column will go down into the, uh, into the liquid, into the water, and there could be multiple stages. Motors could be quite large, 1,000 horsepower or more, 2,000, 5,000. And there's a, also a wide range of uh, pressures and, uh, and uh, flow available for this type of pump. Again, it's a very uh, large uh, industrial water supply type of pump. 
So what is it about pumps that's so fascinating? Like, to me at least. Well, it's the enormous variety. I mean, there's the, the different shapes and sizes and, and, and uh, quantities available. I mean, that, that you see everywhere in industry, in your home, everywhere possible. It's just it's, it's staggering. The, the ideas, the, the, the improvements that are being made all the time. And we've only been, talked about what's called the rotodynamic pumps, those that use velocity uh, to include, uh, increase the, the fluid speed to get pressure. There's also the positive displacement pumps. There's a whole load of pumps there of all different types, allowing us to move thicker fluids and, and, and do other jobs. It's, it's amazing. The fact is, without, without pumps, we wouldn't have the industry that we have and the lifestyle and the civilization that we have now. Rome, back in the, in the day of Rome in 0 BC or, or 0 AD or whatever it was, was a huge city. They had a million people. And that city was only tenable, probably only possible because they had water and the Romans brought in water via their aqueducts, which is really just an open pipe coming, uh, bringing water from the mountains gradually down an incline up into the city. And all Romans had water and this was the only city uh, at the time that had this, uh, this capacity to do that, so they could have an enormous population. And it's the same way with us. Without water, without pumps to bring water to us, it'd be a pretty messy civilization.